I know, I know. I will have to leave you there. Hey, so anyway, we, we just decided to actually start this because um, well, I, I got behind you because the door is locked. Yes, no, you So uh, I assume that all of you knows what passo continuo means and passo continuo playing. So in the old times, um, there was no conductor, which is wonderful. So the only reason for having a conductor was actually having opera or having somebody with choir or having a big orchestra. And even if you would be conducting an orchestra, actually, this would be usually done from the piano or from the harpsichord in Baroque times. So when Haydn went, for instance, to London to um, premiere his London symphonies, which everybody was very excited about, he conducted them from the piano. So he didn't conduct, he did the basso continuo, and there's not even uh, anything written for a piano part. So in this time, uh, the soloist would always play what the orchestra was doing. So there was no violinist that was actually waiting until it was his time or her time to play. They would all play the orchestra part. And when there's a concerto for piano and orchestra, there was a very important um, uh, role for the pianist to actually be con conducting in a way the orchestra in all the tutis. So we are supposed to play the bass line and harmonize the bass line and thus interacting with the orchestra. So this is actually true still for Beethoven. And I think, I don't think that there's many people that play Beethoven basso continuo. I might be one of the only ones. But I've been, whenever I perform first or second uh, Beethoven piano concerto, I make sure that I play basso continuo there too. Um, it is something that makes a lot of sense. Many people say it makes only sense with old instruments. I think it makes even more sense with modern instruments, I have to say. But this is a very personal view. So I asked uh, him to actually prepare a basso continuo uh, because I, uh, this concerto that he prepared, the 414, is a quite specific concerto, quite special concerto. He, um, I don't know who his, the student was, but he prepared the materials so that the student could play basso continuo. So the basso continuo is actually written out. There's numbers on every note that has to be harmonized. And he writes how to harmonize it too, and when not to harmonize it, and when not to harmonize it, what we should do. So there's three possible settings in the basso continuo. The normal harmonizing setting, then the tasto solo. I will actually, maybe, maybe we will give this, yeah. Here you can see it, for instance, tasto solo. This is by Mozart. Tasto solo means that you only play the bass line and nothing else. Mm -hmm. And the third possibility, anybody of you knows this? So harmonizing, tasto solo, or in now setting is unisono. Mm -hmm. Unisono means that the right hand does exactly the same thing as left hand in unisono. And I think there should be something here too. Can you find any unisono? Sorry, this is not very... Yeah, this is the this is, this is, yeah. Yeah, this is the tasto solo, and you were supposed to play only left hand. Uh -huh. Yes, I think there's something in the in the third moment. Anyway, this is. Um, I just wanted to mention this because it will uh, the way that music business in a way is going is very much into the direction of historically informed practice. And um, you can choose to ignore this and to continue a kind of very wrong tradition that started already like 100 years ago, or you can go with the flow. And if you go with the flow, you will have to learn these things. Because I really don't think that many people in 20 years from now will be playing Mozart Concerti on this kind of instruments. I'm, I don't know if I should be sorry or not, but this is where the world is going, and there's a very good reason for this. Um, I'm not saying that this will be better necessary music making, but in some sense it would be a better context for the music, as to force this music on this kind of instrument, this piano. So even though we are right now using this piano, I would like to, to revive this 
absolutely lost tradition of um, continual playing. Who of you have played harpsichord? Wonderful. Do you play continua in harpsichord? Have you done continua? No. no. This is an art in itself. Actually, the second book of uh, Karl Philipp Emmerich Bach, Bach, of, Bach, of uh, the Versuch is all about continua playing. And maybe this should be the base of our training. I will be a little extreme right now, but this should be the base of our training. It trains our capacity of harmonic hearing, of rhythmic understanding, of formal understanding. It is a sort of improvisation. Um, it's an interaction which what the main voice is doing, so it is amazingly healthy. It's maybe the most important thing. So we will here actually work on the basso continuo and on the Eingänge. So this is already a preparation of what I'm supposed to be bothering you with on Monday. Okay. So we should probably start a little bit with this. Maybe we should start with uh, with the tutti. So this concerto, as I said, is a special setting because he prepared the continuo part for a student. And it's quite interesting because there you see how important the continuo part is. There are certain harmonies that do not exist in the orchestra. There are certain notes that he wants to harmonize on the piano but do not exist in the orchestra. So if we play this concerto with no continuo, we will miss quite a lot of information. Yeah. For instance, already the beginning. Um, <laughs> here, the orchestra plays this. And when will the harmony change? This is written a 5 in the piano, which means an A. And this is not in the orchestra. So if we play with no continuo, it will not sound right. No? And uh, then... And here. So the piano changes the harmony earlier in the orchestra. And this creates a friction that is really attractive. Let's start. How, how, I don't know how to play classical. Okay, so. No, um, how wide should I do that? Yes, so probably he writes very okay. Here you can change if you want. In the third. So we have all these numbers, mm -hmm. and they should be played exactly as it's written. So if we have an eight, that means that the right hand upper note has to be an octave. It is a three, it is, so it's eight, three, five. So here. But how often? Like this? Or no. Usually it's like this, exactly. So you do this together with what the woodwinds are doing. Yes. But those, these are the questions that I'm putting. you can leave the orchestra and it's incredibly cool I have to say I mean I stopped I stopped absolutely uh, playing Mozart concerto with the orchestra with with conductor so my uh, which got rid probably of a couple of concerts but I don't mind that at all but whenever people ask me to play Mozart my condition is no conductor so then it becomes there's no conductor needed at all this let me tell you I mean really in Mozart you do not need that the conductor is something that only disturbs because the orchestras, as soon as there's conductor, they just watch the conductor, they do not listen to the soloist. Because they're not supposed to. They're supposed to go with the conductor. So in maybe a Brahms concerto, like number one, this might be important. Number two, probably not anymore. This is much more chamber music, chamber concerto. But in some bigger concerto, maybe it's good for the romantic period, but not the Mozart. Yes? Why not anymore? Uh, oh, the, the second? Yeah. Um, it's a different type of music. For me, the second concerto of Brahms is a very cam charming music piece. Uh, I see. So it is, uh, many people think that this Brahms second, because it's four movements, probably is a very big concerto mm -hmm. and very, not at all. It's a charming music setting. And the piano is always making, a, um, let's say, it's making a, con um, a comment on the, on the orchestra. Mm -hmm. 
So it's um, it's something with the orchestra actually. Mm -hmm. the, usually, the concert master can take over. Mm -hmm. I've heard some very successful performances with chamber orchestra mm -hmm. and no conductor, mm -hmm. and this can work much better. Mm -hmm. It works better because it's a chamber music setting. Mm -hmm. So in a more, in a Chopin concerto, a conductor is important mm -hmm. because this is opera. So you have the aria. And you have the conductors watching, okay, the singer wants to do this, okay, now you change harmony, okay, and now you do here and here. So this is exactly, the orchestra there is kind of doing the basso continuo. No, it's no interaction. And there maybe conductor is important. Mm -hmm. But in Brahms second, no. But I'm being a little iconoclastic, mm -hmm. as I usually am, so I don't know. Okay. So do you think yes. all the concerts of Mozart we can do without? Yes. Uh, because for this, I know because you can also play with uh, a quintet. Yes, these yeah, three like concerti, 413, 414, 415, yeah. yes, there's a quintet. So 4492, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is clear. I, I played actually the yes. quintet. You yes. don't need any. Yes. But uh, the thing is that if you have a larger string section, it's not that it works better with a conductor. Mm -hmm. So a conductor is actually usually necessary for anything where there's no visual contact. Mm -hmm and where there's no interaction, which means opera, especially opera and anything with a choir. Because in opera, if you're in the pit, and I've been in the pit sometimes, I mean, you have no idea what's going on stage. And so there needs to be a conductor to coordinate this, and there's no interaction. So the singer will not sing differently depending on what the orchestra is doing. Mm -hmm. Definitely not. The singer is the singer. <laughs> <laughs> and this, it's the right for this, absolutely. But here, it's definitely much better to have a music setting. So if there's a chamber music setting, usually people are forced to listen to each other, mm -hmm. not to wait for a visual clue, cue, and this will be very, very important. Mm -hmm. So uh, we cannot right now say all the rules for basso continuo, but the numbers here should be probably uh, made exact as possible. Mm -hmm. Yes, so this is... Um, this is... But maybe actually, if you don't, I'm sure that uh, you've seen all these things. But maybe we can just give it a round so that you can see all the all the um, numbers that he writes. No? You want to see what you can put that on the camera? Okay. The score, the score. <laughs> all right. Is this good for the camera? Yeah. This is the best edition, by the way, right now, commercially available, the Bärenreiter. Mm -hmm. And the great thing is that it's totally free, too. So you can download it. Please, just take a look at all this and watch out for the Tasto Solo signs and for the Unisono signs. All right, so this is just a little bit uh, of, yeah, um, a small introduction to continue playing, but now we should work a little bit on our Mozart. And maybe we do it from the start of the solo. Yeah. So. <laughs> I just wanted you to play a little bit more. So um, I have a couple of general um, um, remarks about this. So we have, and I noticed this yesterday too, we have uh, the left hand usually feels not like three voices. So this is a little too much. So this should be three voice and always below this. 
It's like then. Then we have a very different develop, a very different behavior of the right hand and the left hand. So the left hand has generally a rhythmic and a harmonic reasoning, and the right hand a melodic. So the right hand can do motions going forward and backward and upbeats, no? but the left hand should not follow it. So if you, have, for instance, this is a right one, if you go to the here, and you do left hand this, this is not helpful. So because this is only rhythmic and harmonic. So if we want to make a good bar, we will not play like this. We'll play probably heavy. So this is the harmony and the rhythm. And on top of this, So this is absolute um, independent. Mm -hmm. So I noticed that yesterday, that yesterday you were doing things like. So the left hand is not allowed to do this. No, so if you want to make something bigger here, this is only the melody, but no. By the way, this is a mistake. This is a not a real Chopin, this is a bad um, the copy. This is. A yeah, so uh, it's a um, French edition, but this is not important. For instance, um, him, if you do this, uh, this is not good. So the right hand, yes, you can do a very good. And maybe even if you do this very strong, but this is definitely not. This makes not a lot of sense. Can we do only left hand? Left hand. This, this can work. Now, can we do this? So I recommend this very, very much in every day's practice to actually play like this so that we have the interference of the hand's movement, but we have the acoustical isolation of the hand that we're working on. So this is much better. And I'm doing a crescendo here. So, so, then, so this will not happen. Okay, let's start to... Now it's, it's better articulated. We have usually um, a kind of ailment, all pianists. We don't like some void. No, we don't like to have uh, all these kind of articulations that we're supposed to do with no sound. Uh, we usually don't like them. You do things like this. Instead of... So now it's better, but very often you put some pedaling that goes against this articulation. So then... Uh, so this is going up. This is more tension. It's not a distension. In terms of melodic line, we have this... And then... And then still the... So you're doing here a distinction. And then you do this, and you do another distinction. And then we don't know where to go. And then this doesn't sound right. 
So keep the tension. And another thing I noticed yesterday too, when the, uh, whenever we have a soup, uh, it's very tempting to play the subdominant as a resolution, but it's not very good. So if you have some, some this is probably the opposite. I mean. Can we start again? From the beginning. shorter and you will see maybe hey we should get the music back who is the music right now <laughs> thanks Jay, bro, sorry uh, you will see very often let me see if in this music is too that um, the orchestra has much clearer marks than the left hand of the piano so it's typical that the celli have eighth notes with eighth of rests and the piano has quarter notes written of course it should be exactly the same let me see if I find quickly So if you see here, this is a very clear uh, bass rhythm. Mm -hmm. Eighth note rest, eighth note rest, eighth yeah. note rest. So he usually writes this only in Rasa Continuo because it's the same bass line. But when he does it in the piano solo, he usually knows, all the pianists know that these are supposed to be short notes. He writes quarter, 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 quarter. Um, who of you has not played a Mozart concerto yet? OK. All right, so this would be a very important thing to do. <laughs> but you will, uh, when you do, uh, you will watch out the left hand. You have always to compare what is written in the orchestra. So in the orchestra, it's written much, much more information than in the piano. So it's even more important to know what the orchestra does than what the piano does. So you get the information about how you should play it. So it's typical that the um, celli have eighth notes and the piano has quarter notes, but that should be exactly the same thing. So the same thing there. Can we do from there directly? something is going up. So uh, it is very tempting to make resolutions because resolutions are beautiful. But music is not supposed to be beautiful. I'm not so sure. The beauty is a very important feature. Even in Mozart. So, so we have here, definitely it's forte. We know it's forte because we have five voices. It's simple as that. The more voices, the more forte in this kind of music. And then it's even more, sorry, I'm already in, a, in another one. So, yes. So, all this is a very free declamation. And then we have the second thing. Uh, Only the upper and the lower notes. Only this. Mm. 
is a little better. So we have to listen to the interval that is between the upper and the lower note. It's a little better, still could be better. Yes. notes that going to the future in the right hand and but the left hand not so yeah. this is better yeah, so if you held all the three voices in the left hand it will sound much better I mean to the future. I'm not so sure there's a... But yes, but don't follow, with the, don't follow with the left hand. So we're trying to do something. I really urge you to try this too. Right now playing with one hand here and the left hand there because this is a very important feature for, especially for Mozart and for Chopin and for a lot of romantic music that the left hand has a direction going backwards because its function is mainly harmonic and rhythmic and the right hand can do direction forward, direction towards the next bar because it's a melodic. So this is a very big distance. This is not a quartet playing. This is like a song, like a singing line and an accompaniment. This is more an operatic setting. No? Can we do this? But I need to hear your right hand. This is what, yes, exactly, <laughs> yes. Can we try again? Yeah, this is what should. Ah. Yes, 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 yes. It's getting better. It's definitely getting better. Yes, yes, yes. So this different distance of rhythmic distance or directions between both hands are amazingly important to be trained. And so this uh, seemingly independence of the hands is something that we do not have by nature, is something that we have to develop. It's not an independence really, it's a very clear understanding of where each hand has to go. A little bit better. One small musicological thing, when we have trills over uh, appoggiatura, This is usually a so-called acciaccatura, which means only one note. Yes. So it's a This is probably a better way of playing it. Yes. 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 So this goes for Beethoven too. Very often the trill is in acciaccatura. For instance, uh, all of you probably know this. What is this? Thank you. Exactly. So this, there's an earlier piece by Beethoven that he composed when he was 13 years old. It's a quartet, piano quartet with strings. And uh, he uses exactly the same theme, and he writes 3R on this note. Uh, I don't know if you know Here's the second theme was it writes a trill, but it's probably the same. So when we have things like mm, probably it's better. So very often TR means only one note. Okay. Continue. of what the music calls for. 
You're doing something here, ending, ending. And now you're doing here. But probably this is an answer. So the biggest, um, let's say, tension is in the silence. In here, and now this is an. Again. Verstehen Sie? So what we should not do is, there's a viola that is, has this, uh, so this is not part of the basso continuo. The basso continuo here should be almost as to solo. Yeah, this D sharp is very nice, but it's not by Mozart. Yes, it's, it's, it's an A sharp, it's an A sharp, but it's written, yes, exactly, so whatever he writes under the note, usually it's a third, exactly, which is what defines the harmony, yes, the most, again, In the right in the right hand usually we have a melodic line, and this is the virtuoso thing, and the left hand usually has a harmonic and the rhythmic figuration. So this we should uh, do like a very good singer. Mm -hmm. So we have to, in a way, know which is an important note. So for instance, if you do this one, is this the important note or this one? Or is it So is this a coloratura of this note? Or is this a preparation for this note? This might be a little strange what I'm saying right now. But um, let's say that the melody is an ornamentation uh, created around some notes that are more important than others. And this is, Mr. Beethoven has said this. No? He said that maybe 80, 70, 80% 80 of the notes are in uh, service of maybe 20 to 30% of other important notes. So for us, the hierarchy of importance or the degree of ornamentation is one of the most important criteria for a successful performance, for an understandable performance. No? So I hear that here has been... I hear it a little bit like this. Um, so maybe should, should we start from there? So for here... Let's start from here. Yes, this is, I think, better already. So which is more the important note, the lower or the upper? Yes. Uh, 
Uh, yes, I think so. I think so too. Yes. Yeah, this is a little better. So for us, it's important to understand where the main note is because then we will relate all the helping notes to that note. If we do this. In this can be very clear, but it's not very efficient. So we have this off, by the way. And your left hand is doing this. Can we do only this? Yes. And now and getting better yes so in general when we have 16th notes they are much much lighter than uh, our quarter notes or the half notes the general tendency is that 16th notes should not be existent they should be filling of something else no? so uh, I hear very often people playing 16th notes things like um, <laughs> This is a very normal way of playing, which is probably very counterproductive for understanding what the piece is about. Huh? So here the same thing. Mm -hmm. We said the Bartok, and uh, so we have half bar, half bar, and then one bar. Mm -hmm. So this is one wave, no? So half, half, one, half, half, one. That's right. Half, and now one. And half, and one. Okay. Yes. And this is actually not a resolution, but it's an interruption. So it's very normal that Mozart in his sonata, so this concerto, makes three set of trills. This is uh, where people are waiting for the tutti, people are waiting for the trill, mm -hmm. and he tries to, this tension, to use it um, in a way that actually teases the public. So, um, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> and now we are preparing the turn. <laughs> and there it is. Only there it is. No, so this is interruption. You find this in many sonatas too. So, mm. This is better. So the left hand is still not having uh, contact with the right hand. You're doing. But, mm. just some uh, basic uh, information. Maybe we should go for, uh, forward for other people. Um, do you have any questions? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank, but thank you so much. Thank you so much for trying the Basso Continuo. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Uh,